Yes, I'm guessing this is the first time that a, a piece of um, Easter Ross archaeology has made it into a TAFAC conference. Um, why, oh why, I hear you ask. Well, hang on and you'll see. Um, for an anorak like me, the discovery of any new piece of um, Pictish early medieval sculpture is cause for excitement. And uh, 2019 has been a bumper year. Um, more than 30 stones and fragments coming to light that I know about. Uh, the length and breadth of the country. Some very exciting ones that would actually fit well within the, um, uh, the remit of this conference. Um, but the absolute star of the show, without doubt, is uh, this one, which came to light in March of, of this year, uh, discovered by a NOSAS member, Anne McInnes, when she was carrying out a graveyard survey. So uh, she got in touch with the regional archaeologist, Kirsty Cameron, uh, who got in touch with me, and um, we were up there like a shot. Uh, the, exact, um, the exact fine spot has not been made public yet. Um, i trying to, at the moment, um, bring a slightly reluctant landowner along with us, um, but in the fullness of time, I'm sure it's all going to end up on Canmore and uh, the Highland uh, Archaeology Database, etc. But at the moment, Dingwall has been given as the general location. <clears throat> so, um, the extensive uh, early Christian presence along the eastern seaboard of Easter Ross displays a strong cultural tradition um, with large assemblages at Rose Markey and Port Mahomock, north and south, and um, uh, impressive individual uh, cross slabs at Dick. Shandwick and Hilton of Cadwell, some, some of our finest pieces uh, there, without a doubt. So with all of this going on in, in the area, um, one might uh, rightly expect there to be quite a strong um, sort of artistic and thematic connection um, between uh, what's on the seaboard and what's come to light not far um, uh, away near Dingwall. So we went up uh, early April this year and re recorded the three visible faces um, in situ. And my initial conclusion was that this thing has little or no um, stylistic um, uh, or thematic connection to anything that's going on uh, nearby. I um, spoke about this at the Highland Archaeology Conference um, just the middle of last month. And had an interesting um, forthright discussion with Isabel and George Henderson, who um, Isabel is very keen to see strong connections between them. But I'm, well, my brain doesn't work li like an art historian's, obviously. <clears throat> the stone is tall and narrow, and that's true. We can link that um, with um, other tall, narrow cross slabs at Shadwick and Rosemarkey. But we find tall, narrow all over. We find it at Aberlemdo and Cossens and Angus. We find it at Phil's Wester and Perthshire. It's, it's not, a, for me, it's not a distinctly um, a Easter Ross uh, thing. And in fact, we find it further north up into um, Caithness at Skinnet as well. Um, it's true also that the, um, the symbols on this stone are wide side to side, um, similar to Shandwick and Rosemarkey, but again, we'll, we find wide, full width um, symbols, Aberlemno, Cossens, Phil's Wester, um, all over. So again, I, for me, um, these connections don't really nail it as being something in the vein of um, uh, what's really going on in Easter Ross. But what we can see in the imagery that's used in this is quite strong thematic connection with cross labs in southern Pickland, and namely um, uh, cross labs in Perthshire and Angus, which is why we're here today with it. Um, so lo looking just at, at the, the imagery on it, um, the later inscription is kind of pushed over in, into one corner and has unusual breaks, but um, reconstructing the breaks, um, you, you get um, to Macaulay's and a date of January the 2nd, 1796. So that's its later reuse. Um, then um, 
to, to the right of that uh, inscription, we've got the remnant work of what I'm pretty sure is a serpent in Zedrod symbol. Um, it's not closely similar to the one at um, St. Martin's Stone in Angus, but it's of similar proportions in terms of it's not a, it's not a high Z, it's a wide and, and shallow Z. So I think probably quite similar proportions to that one. The um, double disc in Zed Road um, doesn't really um, match in with these um, bosses that look a bit like bread rolls um, on the uh, Rosemarkey uh, cross slab or the multiple spirals that we're getting on the Chandwick one, but it is remarkably similar to what we're getting at Cossens. Um, I th and I think it actually the, the, the double discs have pretty much the same ornament in them, or something very similar. Um, three triple spirals um, filling each disc. The um, Little Hippocamp uh, feature, that's quite a widely dispersed um, uh, image from uh, the Northern Isles right the way down. Um, the closest I can find in terms of size and scale and form um, is on the Ulster Stone in Caithness, um, but uh, as a general form, it, it is uh, widely distributed throughout Pickland. Importantly, though, this little kneeling swordsman with his animal mask is an incredibly close parallel with the panel from Murthley, which is now in the Perth Museum. Or, oh, no, sorry, it's in the NMS. Um, uh, albeit that uh, this new one is a mirror image of it. And interestingly, I think because it's a mirror image, it still looks as if um, the figure has been made to he's holding the sword in his right hand, as you would, um, although the shield is still shown front on. So it's, um, I don't think they've quite got that route, but they've, they've flipped it around. Um, but incredibly similar in terms of the form, the um, ponytail behind and the, um, the central boss on the shield, um, etc. Incredibly close parallel with, with, with Perthshire. The centaur, again, um, there are a few versions of this dotted all over, but for a close parallel, um, we're, we're back down here in Angus and in Perthshire. Um, it's similar in form and size to the one on the Glam's Man stone, um, but the, the axes, the, the sort of hammer-headed axes, are identical to the, um, the centaur figure on the uh, Meagle stone. The cauldron, it's not a widely used image, but we do find it. It's on the Ulster Stone up in Caithness and on various other stones down south. But the closest one that I can find again is uh, Glam's Man's because it's on a, on a stand. It's on um, a sort of props holding it up. The two quadrupeds down below, they're quite common form. Um, I'm still working on looking for close parallels with that. Um, the one on the left with its gaping mouth is more distinctive than the leonine one to the right, um, where the, the head has been lost. And again, we have various portrayals of oxen um, on stones north and south, but for the, for the ones where the, the face is turned on face, Again, we're, we're right back down into Angus and at Cossens. So when we recorded this stone in April, <clears throat> its future looked very uncertain. Um, it wasn't declared treasure trove, so there was no grant available to rescue it. There was no legal right to take it, um, and it looked like it might have to get put, just left where it is and covered back over with leaves and, and, and turf. Um, but thankfully, um, the Pictish Art Society and NOSAS came together and between the two organisations, we funded the uh, stone's removal with the um, permission of the landowner. And that was finally done on, uh, in August of this year, revealing for the first time the front of the, 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 the cross slab, the cross side, and um, quite remarkable it is too. Um, these incredible um, opposing beasts that um, surmount the cross. Um, they're either biting the tails off or regurgitating um, coiled serpents that, that come down below them. Um, quite remarkable. 
Um, it's not uncommon to have flanking beasts uh, uh, sur uh, surrounding or surmounting the cross. Um, uh, we have them north and south. They're usually um, uh, sea creatures of some sort. Uh, I particularly like the ones from Mortlach. They look like uh, Sooty and Sweep. I think they're uh, going to look like they're going to gum you to death. Um, uh, unlike our two new ones here from, from Dingwall, which are definitely uh, fierce and ferocious, um, more teeth than you really ought to fit into a mouth. Um, they are really quite unparalleled, and I think uh, it's a timely reminder of just how um, individual and, and creative the pics can be. It's always interesting to look for connections and parallels, but um, we should also remember that these are artistic creations and um, uh, the creators were capable of um, coming up with something new and different. It's still the subject of more uh, detailed recording and more research. Um, we're kind of hopefully throwing everything at it. I've got a colleague who's done some photogrammetric modelling. I'm hoping to get a colleague to go and do some high-res laser scanning. Um, uh, there's still a lot of uh, interpretation to be done. Um, the ornament within the cross is very, very weathered and worn, but I think with um, some uh, modern um, techniques, we will hopefully be able to make more out of it um, than we can currently see. And it is the subject of a crowdfunding appeal um, organised between NOSAS and the Pictish Art Society. We're aiming to raise £20,000 to cover the cost of its uh, conservation and return to Dingwall and display in the museum there. And as of this morning, we're almost uh, at £12,000, and that doesn't include the gift aid part, which takes us over uh, 12000 So um, if anyone would like to help support this worthy cause, there's the web address. Or, frankly, if you just Google sponsor a Pictish stone, it will take you there. Thank you very much. <laughs>